I had been working as a park ranger for many years and had always heard rumors about the mysterious creature known as Bigfoot. Most dismissed it as a myth, but there were enough sightings over the years to make me curious. One night, while on patrol, I saw something moving in the distance. I approached cautiously, my flashlight shining on a huge, hairy creature standing over eight feet tall. It was Bigfoot. I couldn't believe it. The creature that had been the subject of countless legends was standing right in front of me, and it was angry. It charged at me, and I instinctively pulled out my knife, ready to defend myself. The creature was strong, but I was fast and managed to dodge its attacks. I swung my knife with all my strength and landed a hit on its chest. It roared in pain, but didn't back down. We battled for what seemed like an eternity, until finally, I landed a fatal blow. Bigfoot stumbled back, and I watched as it collapsed onto the ground, motionless. I was both scared and amazed at what I had accomplished, but my victory was short-lived. As I made my way back to the station, I noticed that something wasn't right. I was injured, and the wounds were getting worse by the minute. I knew that Bigfoot had hurt me more than I realized. I stumbled through the woods, trying to make it back to the station, but it was too late. I collapsed on the ground, my strength fading away. I could hear the sound of my colleagues' voices in the distance, but it was too late. The injuries were too severe, and I knew that I was going to die. As I lay there, I thought about my life and all the things I had accomplished. I had always loved my job and felt honored to protect the park and all its inhabitants, but I never imagined that my encounter with Bigfoot would be my downfall. In the end, I died alone in the woods, a victim of a creature that most people didn't even believe existed. But I knew the truth, and I hoped that my story would serve as a warning to others who dared to venture into the unknown. The park could be a beautiful and peaceful place, but it was also full of danger, and sometimes that danger could be too much to handle. I was a junior park ranger, newly stationed at Yosemite National Park. I had only been on the job for a few weeks, but I was excited to be out in the wilderness, working to protect and preserve one of the most beautiful places on Earth. One morning I received an emergency call from a camper who had become lost deep in the woods. My supervisor sent me to rescue him, and I eagerly set off on my mission. As I hiked deeper into the forest, the towering trees blocked out the sun, and the only sound was the crunching of my boots on the forest floor. I had been searching for hours when I heard something rustling in the bushes up ahead. I cautiously approached, thinking it might be the lost camper, but what I saw was unlike anything I could have imagined. Standing before me was a creature unlike anything I had ever seen. It was tall and humanoid in shape, but its skin was a mottled dark brown, and its eyes were black and soulless. Large leathery wings protruded from its back, and it had a long sharp beak that looked capable of tearing flesh. It was a Mothman creature, and it was terrifying. I froze in place, unable to move as the creature lunged at me. I managed to dodge out of the way at the last moment, but one of its wings brushed against my arm, leaving a deep gash. I stumbled backwards, my mind racing as I tried to think of a way to defend myself. The creature let out an ear-piercing screech and took flight, disappearing into the trees. I felt a surge of relief that it was gone, but I knew I needed to get help fast. I reached for my radio but there was no response when I called for assistance. I was lost in the woods and alone, with a monster on the loose. I tried to make my way back to the trailhead, but it was as if the forest was against me. Every time I thought I was getting close, I found myself in a thicket of thorns or a marshy bog. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, and I knew that the creature was out there, stalking me. As the day turned into night and the darkness closed in, my fear turned to desperation. I was lost, injured, and alone in the woods, with a terrifying creature hunting me. I knew that if I didn't find a way out soon, it was only a matter of time before the Mothman found me. I thought about my family, my friends, my dreams, and all the things I would never be able to accomplish. I knew that it was the end for me. The creature killed me or I will die of hunger and exposure. My fate would remain a mystery, another unsolved case of a missing park ranger in the wilds of Yosemite. But the Mothman creature, that terrifying being, it would continue to haunt the woods, waiting for its next victim. And for anyone who dared to venture too deep into the wilderness, 
the memory of my encounter would be a chilling warning of the dangers that lurked in the shadows. I used to work on a hospital campus at a place where patients receiving treatment stayed. It was like Ronald McDonald House, but for adults. I usually worked second shift. There were a little bit of woods around the place and a walking path. After turning down the lights and just having a lamp on at the front desk, the place became a little eerie. As long as we check in and out patients and answer the phones, we are allowed to sit there and read. Now I should mention that I've had a few creepy experiences there and consider myself somewhat of a sensitive. On this particular night, I had been reading about the Fae and people's encounters. I had also been learning about opening up my third eye. I like to read about all kinds of things. I am spiritual but skeptical too. Well, it was getting to be close to the end of my shift, and I started getting ready to leave. As I walked out of the automatic door, nobody around, I got the distinctive feeling someone was walking behind me, so much so that the hair on the back of my neck stood up. As I got to my car, I turned around to see if someone was there, and there was no one. I then heard a high-pitched giggle from the bushes. I got goosebumps all over and got the hell out of there. My husband and I were walking the 3.2-mile loop trail that encircles Lost Lake. We were about two miles around when we heard a sound come from the other side of the lake way off in the distance. It actually sounded as if it were coming from high up on the mountain on the other side of the lake. It was a howl, call sound. It was extremely quiet, and since the birds and other sounds were so clear, we are very sure it was miles away. The sound started low and guttural and reached an amazingly high pitch. It was fairly short in duration, and my husband and I both stopped walking as soon as we heard it. We are wondering if anyone else heard it. We only passed two or three other people on the trail. It was a very quiet fall afternoon. After listening to your audio clips on this website, it sounded most like the sounds recorded in the Klamath area of California in 1993. It might also be of interest that one of the camper sightings in this area from around 94, 96 was at the exact time of day in the Lost Lake area. While sighting in my son's rifle, we heard what sounded like large tree branches breaking. This was heard once by me, and three or four times by my son. There was no one else around the area. As we were leaving, I saw some deer tracks alongside the road on a bank, and right by the deer tracks was an impression that looked like a big bare foot. I had my son put a pop can next to it and took several pictures of it. I can't say for sure it is a boyfriend print, but it looks a lot like the ones I have seen on this and other sites. I posted this a couple hours ago, and someone told me to look into crawlers. If anyone knows if a crawler would target a person, or people please tell me. I'm thinking if it is there's something in my area drawing them here. I always have an uneasy and malicious feeling whenever I go to this one line of houses behind some trees that surround me. Here's the original post. So I've had a slight problem around my house for a bit over a year. I'm in a southern town in Michigan, and I live right next to the woods. My house is less than a meter away from the trees. I'm surrounded by it for nearly a mile on each side, if we're not counting the road. Last year in October, I was outside with a couple friends at about 11 p.m. at night. We were near a park down the street, and suddenly a large black mass comes out of the darkness. It was a dog, I figured, but oddly tall, about up to my shoulders, for reference I'm 5 feet 6, and stood about 6 feet away. It had a deep bark and we OYC ran. This happened for the next few nights anywhere near the park. The only time I saw its eyes was the last night. They were green and reflected like a lamp. May I add every time this happened, it didn't matter if we literally had a light straight on it. We couldn't see its features or anything. The park is fairly well lit too. Another odd instance was when my friend and I were on a walk again, about 4am in December of 2020, roughly a couple months after, and we had sat down at a mailbox. I had a bad feeling and felt the need to go back fast, but my friend needed a break. We had been walking for a bit, so we didn't go. Less than two minutes later, we hear this human-like scream from all around us. It sounded like it was traveling in a circle getting closer. It had a gurgling and odd tone to it that made me think it wasn't human. Either way, we ran back. I figured it was coyotes or something. So I researched some of the animals' calls from near me. None got even close to matching. In February of this year, my sister was out with a couple others. They had stopped at that same park again to chill for a bit around 2 a.m. 
and heard that same high-pitched scream gurgle sound from all around them and once again bolted home. Everything was chill for a bit up until early October, late September-ish. My sister and I went on a walk to get the mail around 9 p.m. On our way back, I said we should walk faster, and she agreed, having a bad feeling as well. We suddenly heard what sounded like a cracking caw from a bird, at an ear-bleeding frequency that was so loud, the streetlight in that area went out for a second as well. I would have told myself it was a bird, but the only thing was is that the birds in my area were gone at this point. Literally last week, late October around 8 p.m., I was taking a walk with a friend to watch the sunset. We had walked over to another subdivision a bit away from us and went to the park there after walking for out 45 minutes. My friend was persistent on going so against my better judgment I did. They sat in the gazebo for a moment, but I couldn't keep my guard down and it seemed like something was by the trees. I take a closer look and see a creature that's pure white speeding towards us. It was running weird but that's all I could say. It looked like something was rotating on it. Either way we bolted, got home about 30 minutes later. The reason I'm even posting this for help is because it's getting out of hand. About an hour ago, early November 8pm, my sister, friend and I went to go for a walk. I had a rotting pumpkin, and my mom told me to go throw it in the woods. We walked to the back to do so, and we see a large white figure speeding past us just behind the trees. I want to say it was a deer, but it was too large and white to be one. I just need to know what this is. It's been terrorizing me and everyone around me for a while. I've even looked into calling an expert, but I don't know what I'd say. Help? <coughs> this story happened about a year ago. Me and my sister went outside while my dad was out with friends. Dot. It was pretty dark outside and my sister wanted to practice her color guard. But anyway, my sis went out into the driveway and I was at the door. My dogs were near us, but they weren't acting weird at all. Then after a few minutes later, we hear a hey that sounded like my dad, but my dad wasn't there. Then out of nowhere, my dog started growling at the backyard. Me and my sister ran inside and closed the door with my dog still outside. Then my dog started barking for a few minutes. Then the barking stopped. After about 20 minutes of trying to calm down, I let the dogs back in. Ever since then, they haven't felt like my dogs. I used to feel okay around them and safe. Now I feel uneasy and scared around them. I don't know what happened that night, but something changed. My dogs aren't the same. Just wanted to share an experience I had a couple months ago to see if anyone else could help me try and understand better what is going on and if anyone else has experienced something similar. The date is between August 21st, 2017, solar eclipse, and August 31st, 2017. My husband and I woke around 3 a.m. to sounds outside our bedroom door. When we looked outside, we found our dogs crying to be let in. But we had locked our dogs in their crate before going to bed, and our backyard gate is locked as well. Jokingly, my husband said, I think aliens teleported the dogs outside. And I said, I hope so, that would be awesome. My husband put the dogs back in their crate, and we went back to sleep. But within a few minutes, our bedroom door opened again, and when I turned to look, two little beings floated into the room. As soon as they saw me looking at them, I was instantly knocked into paralysis and could not move at all. This also shifted time into a super slow motion flow. I began to struggle and freak out, and that seemed to then knock me out of my body into another plane or dimension. I could now move, and when I rolled over to look up at this, it had black-colored wind moving behind and around it in slow motion. I never saw the second being that seemed to stand guard at the door, but I somehow knew it was there. It was hard to focus on it because time seemed to slow way down, and it was as if my vision would vibrate when I looked at it. It had an extremely white head shaped like a Chinese dragon mask. I thought it might be a mask at first with very protruding brows and forehead. I then saw it had a very slim neck and a collar at the top of the suit it was wearing. It was gray and form-fitting with a belt or band in the middle. The energy it was putting off was very unfamiliar to me, and I did not like the feeling of it. I immediately noticed that I could feel myself outside of my body from above at the same time that I could feel it from below in bed. I could see and remember everything at the same time from both locations. My instincts told me to create a protection field around my husband and me in bed, and I pushed out this blue sphere of light around us from below. But as I was watching myself do this from above, it looked like a flat blue circle instead of three-dimensional. 
I was really struggling from below to move and wake my husband up. I could start to feel myself swaying and trying to shake. From above, the energy was so uncomfortable that I wanted to get out of the room immediately. I started floating out my door and then hovering above my pool outside. It was well lit outside, not sure if it was close to a full moon or it was an artificial light from above. I felt as if my body inside could almost break free from this paralysis when I was sucked back into my room and shot up in bed. I woke my husband up and said, They were just here floating around like Peter Pan. He could also feel that something was off and didn't quite know what was going on. He ended up getting our 9mm out and stayed up in the living room for the rest of the night. The time on the clock when this started was 3.23 and when I shot up in bed it was 4.14. I wrote everything down to try and make sense of it all, and a few months later my notes disappeared. I knew something was missing in that hour in between the beginning and the end of the experience, so I went to hypnosis to try and recover my memories. Hypnosis Session There was an hour of time missing from the night the two beings came into my room, and this is what came to the surface during my hypnosis session. I felt sucked out of my bedroom and floated out above our pool outside through our sliding glass door. I then remember being in an extremely bright white room that eventually turned into a large oval-shaped room with a metallic table in the center. I floated over to the table and realized that there were other beings in the room with me. They were very tall with white robes on and they looked like praying mantises. There were two or three of them, very big-looking heads. There was a strange hum to everything. I then felt a warm golden light start to shine down on me from above and it seemed as if they were scanning me downloading and uploading energy software or information. And then, there were all kinds of lights that formed into small bubbles that seemed to have movies or videos playing inside of them floating all around me. I then floated horizontally next to another being that I could not remember seeing, just knew it was guiding me, down a long corridor of openings. And then I remember being submerged in thick gel-like water. It was pulsing with electricity, and I felt my body being pulled outward as if being flattened with the waves of energy. The hum in the silence was very loud and I felt myself being pulled into a wormhole or tunnel. It was pumping me through it like an ocean current, ten feet forward, three feet back, and I felt like this light led me back towards my bedroom. As I looked back up into this light, there were four blue beings looking back down at me from above, and then I shot up in bed in my room again, knowing instantly that the two beings were just in my room floating around like Peter Pan right before all of this happened. It was as if I had floated above my pool and then was instantly sucked back into my room and body before recovering these memories during my hypnosis session. I do remember other humans being in this place also, whether they were helping or being helped also. This place did not feel as if it existed in this reality or time or universe. It was somewhere completely separate and outside of everything. After this experience, I went to a float tank on October 22nd, 2017, and had memories of being in a craft and traveling through wormholes out in the universe. That night I woke up to a violent episode where my eyes were banging around in my head so hard that I couldn't move without throwing up for hours in the bathroom and had to be taken to a vertigo specialist that diagnosed me with BPPV, and I have had issues with it to this day still. The Bell Witch was a local haint in my hometown that is a story in its own right, but I have an old tale related to her. Growing up I would walk to from school, and I would cut through my neighbor's property to get there. Miss Ebby was her name. Sweet as pie with a voice smooth as butter. She was a widow and an empty nester, and I think all around a little lonely. Anyway, she and I got into this routine where I'd stop by her house every afternoon on my way home from school and she'd usually feed me cornbread or biscuits or some sort of snack, and we would just hang out and chat out on her big front porch. Well, one day I noticed the doors were all flung open and something just didn't seem right. I walked into the house and her house was torn to pieces. I mean, all the cabinets were open, everything pulled out and strewn all over the place. Honestly thought she'd been robbed, so I start yelling for her and I hear her hollering upstairs. Now keep in mind, she lived in an old antebellum mansion, this place was huge and though I was there every day, I never made it past the kitchen. So I hear her yelling for me upstairs and I run up this huge grand staircase and through this winding hallway and I find her in her bedroom. She is distraught. She's hooting and hollering and wailing, I can't find it! I can't find the book! I asked her, what book? And she says, 
The spell book. I knew exactly what she had meant at that point. Somewhere down her family lineage was relation to the Bell Witch, and somehow she had come into possession of one of her spell book. This was common knowledge to her close friends and loved ones. I remember looking at it once. She kept it locked up in a cupboard downstairs like it was a museum piece. She went on to tell me she had opened up the book that day just because she was curious or something. She ran out to the grocery store and she came back and her house was in ruins, but the only thing was missing was that damn spell book, never to be found again. Till her dying day she swore she was cursed because of losing that book. My own personal encounter with a boogeyman was actually in town around dawn. I was in probably fifth grade and unlike most kids I was an early riser. It was actually about this time of year, probably 6.30 in the morning, and I was standing over the kitchen sink looking out the window with a cup of coffee. Hillbilly kid. Coffee at age 10 was normal. Twitch. While mom got ready for work. It was kind of foggy out and just starting to get light enough that you could see things clearly. Our house looked over a large yard, more of a field when you had to mow it, that sloped downhill with an old access road, maybe 120 feet from the window I was at, cut across it to reach the back of the property. It was all grassed over and smooth, so we kept it mown like the rest of the yard. I turned around for some reason, and when I looked back out the window, down on the access road, this thing was walking down it from left to right. It was easily six feet long without the tail, and two, three feet high at the shoulder. Four long legs, walking steadily forward with its proportionally small head down and forward just like a dog heading somewhere with intention. What struck me was its coloration and tail. It was overall a brown color, just a generic brown dog color. But it had almost a cape, wouldn't say mane, of dark hair that went from its head over its front shoulders and tapered partway down its back with a long, curved, bushy tail held low and curving upward. At that distance, ears were indistinguishable, and its muzzle was oriented away from me so it was hard to tell what kind of face it had. Its physical appearance said big dog, but the way it walked was exactly like a lion. It had a sort of sway and rolled its feet into the ground. I work at sea on a bulk carrier. One time I was on watch at night with one other guy on the lookout for me. He was looking forward out the windows and I was just making coffee, wandering from equipment to equipment to monitor the situation. We were in the open ocean and there was nothing shown on our AIS and nothing on the radar, so I was happy to be a bit chilled about it all. Then I came back to the radar screens and a target was showing on our longer range, S-band radar, so I selected it and got the system to track its course and speed etc. I kept an eye on it from then and asked the lookout to keep an eye out for another vessel on our starboard bow, where it should be coming into visual range in a few minutes. The target then showed up on the X-band radar, so I acquired it on that. I went back to the long-range radar and had a look at the tracking details, and the system was telling me that the other vessel was on a collision course for about 40 minutes time. I had the target, which I assumed was a vessel, on my starboard bow, so that made me the giveaway vessel in a crossing situation so I knew what I had to do when it came to it and wanted to take early action, but I was still weary that neither myself or the lookout had even spotted it yet. I had another look at the AIS, auto ID system, to see if there was anything out there and it showed nothing. It's not uncommon for AIS to be crappy. Thought nothing of it. I altered my course to starboard to pass astern of the target at the sort of normal distance and got the closest point of approach up to the recommended two miles. Still, couldn't see anything. But at this point, I was happy that I wasn't going to hit it whatever it was so we just carried on. After we passed the vessel and the range had increased up to about 4 miles, it vanished off both radars, just like that. Gone. I don't think there was ever a ship, and I explained the situation to the old man the next day, and he was saying it could have been a cloud, but I've never seen that happen with a cloud before. Especially since it was showing a perfect constant heading and a nice 12.5 knot speed the entire time. The lookout was just saying it was a sign from God, but okay then. Freaked me right out. I used to work security, and several years ago, I was assigned to a remote construction site where a summer camp was being built. It was quite literally in the middle of the woods, roughly four or five miles into the forest with only a single access road they'd been using to haul equipment and supplies and such. My job was to provide overnight security, 
doing a foot patrol of the entire area. The patrol covered two miles in all. Roughly once every hour, and then going back to my post, a tiny wooden shack not much bigger than a phone booth, to fill out my logs. Other than the occasional black bears and coyotes, it was a very boring assignment. With one exception. I was doing a routine patrol one night near the end of my shift, around 3 a.m. or so. I'd just passed the gate where the access road enters the site, when I heard an extremely loud, piercing scream that seemed to have come from some distance down the road. It sounded like a woman screaming in absolute terror, so I immediately took off sprinting as fast as I could in that direction. I didn't hear anything else after the initial scream, but about a quarter of a mile or so down the road, guesstimating, I came upon a car parked just off the side of the road. There was no car in sight when I'd come through on my way to my shift, so it had to have been parked there fairly recently. Not running, no lights on, no doors open or anything. I called out to see if anyone was there, but no answer. I looked around the general area but didn't see anything. Needless to say, I was pretty god d sketched out at this point. I ran back to my post and reported what I'd heard seen to the police since there wasn't really anything else I could do. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess, nothing ever really came of it. I never found out whose scream I heard or what caused it. The car was apparently owned by a guy who lived in the area, but I never heard why it was there. My supervisor suggested that maybe I'd heard a mountain lion or other animals screaming, but I've heard those sounds before, and although they're definitely freaky, there's no mistaking an honest-to-goodness human scream. Thanks for listening, dear ghouls. Hope you enjoyed these stories. Do comment, like, and subscribe. If not for us, then for YouTube algorithm that helps push the video to the greater audience. Thank you, dear family.